Uh, my topic is about uh, enhancing primary defense using software defined radio. Um, so let's talk about this uh, uh, by stating the problems. The first thing we're going to talk uh, today in today's agenda, um, we will talk first uh, discover the problems with the current parameter defense, and then uh, we're going to talk about the solution using software defined radio, uh, more like a how to. And then the third one, we're going to cover some technical details, and in the end, uh, we'll share some additional thoughts. Uh, so here's the issue of the current parameters. Um, as you can see, uh, if you have a parameter or defined physical boundary, the defense could be made easier. Uh, think about the time when you have the moat or have the walls. But in real situation today, the real defensing target will be your home, your office, which may not have clear boundaries for you to protect. And since current uh, uh, defense system is based on the boundary, sometimes your capability is limited uh, to the sensors, <coughs> such as uh, cameras, motion sensors, anything of these. Um, so basically, your sense around your, um, your surrounding cannot go beyond those sensors. Um, and also, if uh, the attacker is trying to recon against your parameter, there's nothing you can do about it because basically they haven't t really touched the sensor. They haven't really stepped into the zones of your camera or your motion sensors. So you never know they have ever showed up before. So here's one assumption I'm going to make before I propose my solution, uh, which is an attacker would usually carry a cell phone with them when they try to enter the trust parameters. Um, I think this assumption is pretty accurate considering you know, in the fact that 95% Americans carries, carries or own a cell phone. I mean, also, if you're a attacker, you're breaching the parameter, you need something, some communication device in order to talk to your coworkers. Um, so it's, it's really safe to kind of assume that there's a, a, a pump breach or pump recon, there's a cell phone at present. So here's the solution. Um, um, it's to use a software radio, a software defined radio to snip the MC information and perform statistic analysis on the presence of the device near parameter just to help the de uh, detection and investigation. And how to do that, I'm going to show you here. But um, at the very beginning, we're going to talk about what software defined radio is and how it can be used in defensing the parameter. So uh, the SDR means software defined radio apparently. And also, it's a communication system uh, with the hardware uh, components defined as the software. So it's really flexible. You can do, it's programmable. So it's, a, it's something like connected to PC or embedded system. You can operate a software def defined radio using either a Raspberry Pi or your laptop. Um, so and if you power it in a Raspberry Pi, it's able to um, connect the external uh, battery pack. So you can place the whole set of device anywhere you want. Here's the hardware kit um, people generally use. The first thing is uh, the, the TV dongle, which is the, uh, the, the, co the corner one you see right there. Uh, it's a pretty cheap device. It's, um, uh, it's originally a VHF receiver for, um, for the television, but it's programmable, so a lot of people use it as a starter kit for the uh, software-defined reading. And then uh, Hackler Fund. Uh, is another kit which uh, generally being used, uh, 300 bucks. Um, the, the first two devices can be used for sniffing traffic only because um, their connectivity to the host computer is limited uh, to the connector, which is USB 2. And then if you want to go further and have a faster trans like tr uh, transmission between the SDR and your host uh, machine, you need something faster, which is um, like Blade RF, which is powered by a USB 3.0, so it's allow faster transfer speed. So that, that's probably your cheapest choice if you want to um, be a BTS, which is a cell phone tower. And then USRP. USR, USRP is a different type of device. Um, allow the connection between the device and the host machine at a, using Ethernet connection. So there won't be bandwidth problems, but it costs way more. And MC sniffing is the very core of uh, today's topic. 
uh, because it's a unique identifier of the mobile device. Uh, it's something sitting on the SIM card uh, as a 15-digit uh, identity number. So the first is MCC, three-digit is a country code, and the second uh, three-digit is a network code, which identifies your carrier. Um, typically, um, each American carrier uh, have uh, more than one MNCs out there. And then the third is a nine-digit identifier that uniquely identify um, the, uh, the SIM card. So MC can be sniffed, but only when, uh, only when the device is powered on, looking for a cell tower or it's, it's hopping cell towers. So there's two ways, uh, and uh, during, during transmission, um, MC is transferred to TMC, which is a temporary uh, identifier uh, between tower and device. It's, so it's, it's some type of protection mechanism that they, don't, they do not always uh, transmit the, the MC uh, over the air. But uh, it's, it can be sniffed because, you know, it's, uh, when, whenever they initialize the connection, they will actually send out the, the MC for you to sniff. So there are two ways to sniff it. One way is to passively sniff and wait until uh, the device approaching um, the nearby towers. And the second option is to be a tower and then sniff the MC. Apparently the second option is more pra practical for getting all the MC numbers around you. So there are, two, uh, there are three signals we're collecting. Um, they are MC, MC information, the timestamp, which means the actual time the device showed up around your parameter, and the signal threat, strength, uh, which kind of identify the range or the distance between your um, fake tower and the actual device. Um, this information will, will be used in a simulation later on. So there's a few use cases i listed here. So uh, the first is just to identify the potential threats. Assuming uh, an unknown mobile device showed up around your parameter, and which you have never seen before, you would assume that's some level of threats. You can perform like statistical analysis just to find out uh, you know, how frequent or has that device showed up before. Um, so, so you can better know whether it's gonna, threat, it's gonna be a threat or it's actually just some random or, or normal traffic. And also you can perform the post-bridge investigation, meaning uh, if someone breached your parameter in the past, you can only rely on you know, camera footage or uh, you know, sensor information, which doesn't tell you much. Uh, but in this case, you can have the MC of the individual, whoever carries that mobile device that enters your parameter. And also um, use the same MC for conviction if necessary. And as the part three, we will talk, we'll be talking about some technical de details, like how to implement this solution. Um, the first, first thing we're gonna talk about is just MC catchers. Uh, MC catcher is a pretty common concept. Um, uh, the first mentioned by Chris in DEF CON 18. So there's a YouTube video link that links to the original um, uh, video. He actually did a live demo at DEF CON 18 just to show that he can sniff all the information that uh, you know, that, that whoever attended that, uh, um, uh, that lecture over that um, DEF CON 18 conference. And then um, he was using the, uh, the, the more expensive device because the Blade RF wasn't available at that time. And then uh, there's other uh, sniffing solutions available like at way cheaper price, like second link I listed up here. And then the second tech stack was actually to actually spoof a cell tower. Um, so the whole idea is to uh, set up a cell tower and then relay the, try to relay the traffic and then just entice all the nearby device to connect uh, to, your, to your like fake cell tower. And then uh, there are a few things to notice is that the, the signal strength of your cell tower can be really low because it only functions near your parameter. You don't wanna, the fake tower send like super strong traffic to go way further and then you know, draw the attention of the law enforcement. That's something you don't wanna do. Um, and also uh, once, once the, the phone 
goes near your parameter, uh, it'll try to connect to your tower, and you can perform the EMC sleeping. So putting it together, um, so the solution uh, I was testing with is just to set up a, a GSM tower, which is also called a G GSM BTS, using the Blade RF, and runs every five to 10 minutes. So in the simulation I'm gonna show later on, it runs every five minutes. And then and only enter a very si uh, restricted like signal strength. Like don't go way far sending high, um, like high power signals to your nearby uh, devices. And then the second part was just using IMC catchers to sniff the, the signal for later analysis. Just three of them. Uh, IMC number, timestamp, and signal strength. That's all you need. The next section, we're gonna perform some analysis. Um, so which is um, uh, the traffic we generally uh, identifies. Um, apparently, you're gonna pick up all this traffic if you set up a tower like that. The first group is your neighbors, which uh, generally um, always be there throughout the day or night, depending on go to work or not. Um, so the, the signal will be like um, medium strength, but they'll always be there. The second group of signals will be uh, the signals that only showed up at a certain time of the day, certain days of, of a week, such as uh, deliveries, like Fed FedEx guy, UPS guys. Um, these guys only deliver in the morning, in the afternoon, or uh, early evening. And also garbage collections and gardening, which, only, uh, which will show certain presence around your parameter for a very short period of time. And you, sometimes you pick up like commuter signals as well, which has a very short um, presence, like the signal only lasts for um, maybe five, 10 minutes, and very uh, generally further away from your parameter. And apparently the whole, the whole idea is to find intruders. Um, so if you, so, so the point here is that if a device, like a never foreseen device, showed up at perimeter or at an even a uh, very close distance, um, you should see that as a threat. It's just someone carry an unknown cell phone, um, like some device you have never seen before, but approaching your parameter, you should raise your attention. But it could also be, you know, false positive, just in case, you know, there's new gardeners or there's, you know, a uh, new delivery guy. Um, in this case, you might need to think about some other, to combine the information with other sensors just to figure out what exactly is, a, is approaching a parameter. And also, the whole system can be used to recognize the, uh, the recon traffic as well. So uh, assuming a certain device showed up near your parameter at day one, um, and it had never been seen after maybe five, 10 days, and at, at day 10, they showed, up, they showed up near your parameter or you know, breaching your, uh, your boundaries, um, and then showed up a signal strength like 10. And that's definitely um, something uh, worth attention. And then the aftermath analysis, which means um, just in case your parameter is breached, you have the recording of all the MC information near your parameter, uh, near your fake tower, so that you know this particular MC has a go beyond your parameter and enter your trust zone and you should kind of inform the law enforcement regarding this MC number. And I'm gonna show a quick uh, uh, simulation of what I really mean. Well, these are simulation data generated uh, just like the data captured in the wild. Uh, but none of those are real. So just a disclaimer, these are, these are not real EMCs. These are from, uh, there's from simulation data only. And then I have the simulation program that actually generate this. I'll, show, I'll post it on my GitHub later on. Um, as you can see, anyone want to take a guess what's the first one, who, who the, like what type of the first guy is? So basically his activity time is between pretty much um, all day except for two hours off. Anyone want to give a thought? 
Stay. Yeah, that's right. Neighbor or stay home mom or whoever spent most of the most of the time at home. So only goes out goes away from from his home, which is my neighbor, uh, for two hours during the day. And then the second and the second guy basically uh, takes off around. Uh, you know, let's check out what time was it. Yeah, takes off really early, like six in the morning, and then uh, you know. The signal shows back again around like 5.45 at night. So it's highly likely a commuter. Like whoever like, lives near my parameter and goes to work. And those are the information I get from him. And then the third one, um, uh, so basically showed up around um, 11 and then goes away around 12.20. So it's probably a gardener spent two hours doing the gardening near my parameter. Right. And the next one had a similar signal strength, but actually uh, only active for 15 minutes. So I would assume that as a delivery guy. The next one is really, next one is really hard to see, but it's pretty tiny. So the size of these dots actually means the signal strength. So this is a low, uh, this is a low signal strength device uh, that's near my parameter only for a tiny bit of time in the morning and a, small, a tiny bit of time uh, in the afternoon, like late afternoon. Anyone had a, want to give a thought what this is? Yeah, that's right, the commuter. Someone walk past my house in the morning and then come back and pass by my house again in the late afternoon. So you see this, this type of signals a lot in the, in the real world. But again, this is just simulation data. It doesn't really uh, mean that's a person or something. And the last one, as you can see, is pretty, you know, it's pretty dangerous because basically it has the, uh, uh, it starts around like 8 p.m. and end around like 8.10. So the, the activity is about half an hour. And then the signal strength is 10. So this is the poten potential bridge. This is, the, this is the situation that this device is extremely close to my fake tower and, and active around there for half an hour. So this is the actual thing that you know, happens exactly at my location for half an hour and then take off after half an hour. So this EMC number needs to be captured and needs to, be, needs to draw my attention immediately. But in the real world, this could be just me using a burner phone that walking to my own home. So, that's pretty much it. All right, let's come back to the slides. Um, well, done for the simulation, uh, there's some additional thoughts regarding the same techniques. Um, first, let's talk about the advanced features, the features that uh, allows us to get more like accuracy from the solution. Um, the first section is, uh, the, the first point is actually to integrate uh, with existing parameter defense solutions, such as your sensors or cameras or whatever alerting mechanism you have. It might be a, you know, infrared sensors as well, so that you know exactly um, who and how they approach your parameter. Let's say, if an, in, the, in the presence of a new delivery guy, you want to find out that's actually a delivery, delivery guy. So when, when the, we, when the alert from the EMC alerting system showed up, you can look at the camera just to find out if that's a delivery guy or not. Um, the second section, uh, the second point is actually you can um, trigger some actions of the drones. If you have a drone, you can have the drone to fly a specific route, like more like a patrol route if you see certain alert. So you, ca you can possibly identify um, like vehicles or you get real-time image of your surrounding. So, so your drone would, would not, as you know, like drone typically only fly for like about 15, 25 minutes. So it won't be in the air all the time. But this alerting system kind of give you this initial you know, trigger that tells your drone to fly the predefined route just to see who's out there. And all these measures helps to reduce the false positives to, to kind of tell you what exactly is out there. 
And then uh, we're going to talk about the restrictions as well. Mm. The first thing is that uh, the person needs to have a cellular device, basically a phone with them, uh, so you can identify them. Um, even though this is common, but just in case, like a very advanced users will try to uh, hide their hide their phone when they approach with parameter. But these pros, you're going to have to. But there's a, not to say that there's a, no way to find them. Like assuming uh, there's a, like a low signal strength uh, de device or device that actually near your parameter, but suddenly lost the signal. It might be the guy is actually ha like hiding their, their phone in aluminum foil or just powered it off. So there's a way to kind of uh, identify those as well. And also the location basically is, is like estimation based on the signal strength. Uh, if for some reason, like if someone put it, place his phone in the backpack and there's uh, uh, some kind of material that blocking, blocking the signal strength and the signal might be thinking this guy is pretty far away. But in, in, in fact, he could be very close to your parameter. And the, the third point is, def is definitely the, the, uh, the legal concern for this thing. Uh, as FCC regulation stated, uh, operating under certain spectrum, especially GSM spectrum, is, uh, is, is a violation. So um, I would assume that you know, if you are to try this solution at home, use it only for experimental purposes only. And then um, law enforcement has their own MC caching um, devices and solutions on their own, but it's a different story. Uh, there's a similar ideas to this. Uh, typically, what I can think of is to sniff the Bluetooth traffic from the uh, vehicle's time pressure monitoring system sensor as well. Assuming like you can set up those sensors, uh, uh, you can set up certain devices near the entrance of your community. And then you basically can have an idea uh, who is actually entering uh, the community. If there's some never foreseen uh, a vehicle uh, TPM sensor, you know there's, there might be you know, uh, new vehicles coming or there's unknown uh, vehicles approaching uh, defined parameters. It's kind of easier for, to implement this one because um, normally a vehicle will go down the, uh, the designated path. It's not like uh, pedestrians have to go, but uh, ca pedestrians can go like different routes to approach your house, but vehicles have to be on a certain path, a typically road. Um, what I can think of is the methodologies would be the same thing. All you need a timestamp uh, identifier and a signal strength, and then the analysis uh, will be just like what I performed before. Well, again, uh, all data I'm showing, rep I'm presenting today is from the simulation, and the pinning doesn't represent, represent anyone but myself. That's it, everyone. Thank you.